it's Alana and welcome back to my channel for another chapter of Sweetbriars Leaving the City. In the last chapter, Kate got her first day at school and met Violet for the first time. And in today's chapter, Sweetbriars will be getting a new addition. As always, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you know when I'm uploading chapter 6. And if you have any questions, comments or reviews, feel free to put it in the comments below or message me on my social medias at Alana Clark Equestria on Instagram, Facebook or at Ace underscore Equestria on Twitter. And without further ado, let's start reading. Sweetbriars Leaving the City, Chapter 5 Kate had been attending her school for almost a month but hadn't gotten to know many other students besides Violet. The other girls were polite but kept to their own groups, making Kate feel rubbish at making friends. She missed having other friends to talk to and didn't know how to connect with the other girls without coming across as strange. Kate missed her old school sorely. She hadn't had to make new friends before. Her old friends had been around forever and hanging out with them was fun and easy. Violet didn't seem to care. Kate felt grateful that she'd met Violet, but she also thought that maybe Violet intimidated the other girls. In class, she said what she thought and however the other students felt about it, the teachers liked that she took a bold angle in discussions and they encouraged her. Kate was a little in awe of Violet with her brazen thoughts and views. It made Kate realise she often told the teachers what they wanted to hear and avoided possible criticism from other students. Violet didn't seem to give a hoot about this. Kate found Violet's habits both peculiar and strangely comforting, particularly with food. One day at lunchtime Kate got the nerve to ask Violet about it as she was sniffing at her bowl of pasta. Is something wrong? Kate asked. You can never be too careful with food, Violet confessed as she wrinkled her nose. Kate tilted her head and kept a blank face, waiting for more of an explanation. I had a severe case of food poisoning at my old school. Tandoori chicken, Violet revealed dramatically. Oh, not nice, said Kate gently. Yes, it was nasty. The food at this school is gourmet compared to my old school. So, totally agree. My old school served frozen food most of the time, sympathised Kate. After I was sick, I prepared my lunch and took it to school each day. Since it was a few years ago, the memory is finally starting to fade, said Violet with a laugh as she stabbed at a piece of pasta. Kate was surprised to discover this happened years before and Violet remembered it like it was yesterday. Kate had noticed Vi Violet relaxing a tad as each day passed. She didn't poke food incessantly with her fork anymore or pull it apart. Neither did she wash her hands all the time. Kate was relieved for this, as she was tired of waiting outside the bathroom all the time. As each day went by, the prospect of making friends with other girls felt more remote. At lunch times or in the school breaks, Kate and Violet found themselves sitting apart from the other girls. One day they joined a table of girls and Kate and Violet greeted them warmly. The girls said hello finished their conversation and got up to leave a few minutes after. Rude, said Violet in a dramatic voice after they'd left the table. Kate was quiet for a few seconds, trying to work out what had happened. I'm not sure, Violet. They'd finished their lunches. Maybe they have somewhere to go. Violet smiled brightly and said, Sure, you're right. And she changed the subject. That same day after lunch, Violet, surprisingly, didn't know where the hockey field was and a girl they'd met on their first day called Tabby showed them the way. Tabby seemed popular and was often seen flitting from group to group. She had pale blonde hair and was petite but kind of sporty looking. She had a spattering of freckles on her nose, vivid green eyes and fair eyebrows. Tabby also responded to something Violet said in art and a lively discussion followed. Alex had been busy with new school projects and made a new friend named Toby. When he visited Sweetbriars one weekend, he purred up the driveway on a shiny white motorbike. He made an impression as he dismounted from his motorbike wearing a tight grey t-shirt and equally tight faded ripped jeans with short scuffed boots. Toby had bouncy blonde hair and a deep golden tan and blue eyes that reminded Kate of the sky on a clear day. When he arrived, Kate was grooming Odette and he waved to her in a familiar way before walking over to join her in the stall. "'You must be Kate. Delighted to meet you,' said Toby excitedly. "'Hello,' said Kate, somewhat shyly. "'This horse is magnificent,' declared Toby as he inspected Odette, then grinned broadly at Kate. 
Kate thanked Toby, but was taken aback by his enthusiasm and familiar manner. "'So how is life treating you in the countryside?' asked Toby, as he stared intently into both Kate and Odette's eyes. For a second, Kate wasn't sure if he was talking to her or Odette. "'It's very nice and so beautiful here,' Kate said sweetly. "'Excellent to hear. It must help having a big brother as fun as Alex around.' Uh, yeah, of course, replied Kate, somewhat hesitantly as she thought about how Alex was often busy lately. At that moment, Alex called out for them to come to the house as Mum had been baking biscuits. Kate walked with Toby into the house, following the delicious smell. Boy, did Toby seem to like the biscuits. He wolfed down four of them and gave the impression that Mum was the next Nigella Lawson. He complimented her and asked questions about her baking and was surprised to hear that she hadn't really cooked that much until recently when she'd been inspired by her new agar oven. Toby gave the impression that he heard your every word and cared about it too. They all liked Toby. The only thing Kate didn't like was the way he ruffled her hair when he said goodbye and went off go-karting with Alex. Later that afternoon, Kate was having a riding lesson with her mum. Since they'd moved, she had been teaching her as Bridget wasn't around. Mum specialised in teaching show jumping and her teaching style differed. Now Kate was sitting on Odette in the dressage arena waiting for the lesson to start. Mum checked the girth before rubbing Odette's nose affectionately and fixing her gaze on the side of Odette's face. When she ran her fingers along the cheek piece of the bridle, revealing oily grime on her fingertips. Darling, this bridle is not clean. Kate was surprised she'd forgotten to clean it after her last ride. She really hadn't been herself lately. She thought quickly. Well, I couldn't find the saddle soap, said Kate, thinking this was believable, as Alex left things in wayward places. Oh, is that right? replied her mum, raising her eyebrow. She looked at the ground as she circled her toe in the sand before looking at back at Kate. Kate, you and I both know that Alex is hopeless and cleans his bridle once a month at best. Usually when I remind him and am standing next to him to make sure he does it. Kate felt indignant. Well, why do I need to clean my bridle all the time if Alex doesn't? Darling, because you are my angel who does things right and I take so much pride in that. Also, don't you think Odette deserves clean tack? Kate couldn't argue with that. She thought it was still somewhat unfair, but it made her happy that her mum was proud of her. And it really was important that Odette had only the best, including clean tack. Right, are we going to get on with this lesson? I love teaching my little girl again, said Mum. Kate found the exercises helped Odette to have more energy, particularly when she went into a two-point position, standing in the stirrups and taking the weight out of the saddle to warm up and let Odette stretch. After the lesson, Kate decided to ride around Sweetbriars to let Odette cool down, leaving the farm along the lane and coming back in at the back of the fields. Kate let Odette stretch her golden neck out into a relaxed walk. Her coat reminded Kate of honeycomb, the colour made even richer by spending the warm, warm summer days grazing in the fields. Kate was passing the neighbour's house. With the car gone, it looked like no one was there, but as she passed directly in front of the house, she could see a window blind open a crack. Suddenly, the blind snapped abruptly closed, startling both Kate and Odette. Kate focused on the path ahead, careful to avoid giving the impression she was snooping. Odette's hooves made a soft rhythmic clip-clop on the dirt road and Kate could hear the birds singing. She took a deep breath and felt herself starting to relax. When they arrived behind Sweetbriars, they turned right and followed the grass path that circled the property. On the left was the forest. After a few minutes, Kate could see the gate that led into the back of Sweetbriars. As she got closer, she became curious. Beside the gate sat a cardboard box with a stone on top. When she reached it, she dismounted Odette and looked around. There was nobody there. Then Kate heard a pitiful whimper coming from the box. Odette was sniffing at it, and Kate pushed her away as the horse was becoming more curious and often didn't know her strength. Kate took the stone off and tentatively opened the one of the top flaps of the box. As she did so, she saw grey hair and a pair of soft grey eyes peering up at her. It was a kitten! Someone had left a small grey kitten at Sweetbriars. Amazed, Kate scooped the kitten up into her arms. The creature snuggled into her chest and stopped whimpering. It felt small and skinny, but had a shiny coat and clear eyes. How long had it been in the box? 
For a moment, Kate was shocked that someone could leave a defenceless animal on its own. Odette was trying to sniff the kitten, and Kate let her look, but shielded the delicate creature with her arm. Kate decided to walk back to the stables, leaving Odette with her right hand and protecting the kitten with her left arm. Kate marvelled at the fact that she had been nagging at her parents by kissing a cat only for a perfect kitten to be left at their gate. The big brown mouse had not been seen again, much to everyone's surprise, and Kate's parents had been so busy fixing the farm and trying to find riding school ponies that finding a kitten wasn't a top priority. When Kate arrived at the stable, she put on Odette's head collar and tied her outside her stable with her free arm. It wasn't that easy, as it was dinner time for the horses. She was moving around impatiently, stamping her feet. Once Kate succeeded in tying her up, she went to the feed room where her mum and dad were preparing the evening horse food. Mum, Dad, look what I found! cried Kate excitedly as she entered the feed room with the kitten snuggled into the corner of her arm. Her father stopped what he was doing and came to look. Kate unbent her arm to show her dad the kitten. As she did this, Mickey jumped on Kate's legs and began scratching his paws against her jumpers. He whined, also eager to have a look. Well, isn't that a cute little thing? Whose kitten is this? asked her dad, looking miffed. Then he shushed Mickey and picked him up to quiet him. No one's, I think. He was left at the back of our farm in a box. Someone left him there, Kate said, her eyes wide with excitement. Oh, how lovely! Please let me hold him, said her mum, joining them and stretching her arms out. She held the kitten in the air, having a good look. The kitten stared at her and began to purr loudly. She looked under the kitten's tail and said, Yep, it's a boy! He likes you, mum, said Kate, laughing. I guess he does. How adorable! Are you sure you didn't get this kitten from somewhere else, Kate? Her mum said, fixing her gaze on her daughter. Of course not, Mum. The box is still sitting at the back gate. You can go see for yourself. I suppose it's fate. The conversation died away and Kate realised how much she wanted to keep the kitten. She swallowed and said with a small voice, I guess we can keep him, as we really need a cat. She looked at her parents in anticipation and played with her bracelet. Her mum brought the kitten to her chest and somehow the purring became louder as he snuggled into her. She clucked and looked at Dad and then said, I don't see why not, Kate, but we need to take him to the vet and make sure he's healthy. Until then, he can sleep in the laundry room. He needs a good feed and a nice warm bed. Her dad admired the sweet kitten with his smart grey coat and his loud purr that sounded like Toby's motorbike. He gave the kitten a pat, and nodded, and said, Great. Problem solved. Kitten found and no more mice. Kate decided to name the kitten Piper, after the Pied Piper who removed the rats from the German town of Hamelin. Also the children, but Kate chose to ignore that fact as she liked the name. After a couple of days, she decided Piper was a bit long and shortened it to Pip. Pip seemed to like his new name, and within a few days he started coming when she called to him. The family took Pip to the vet, and apart from being underweight, he was declared healthy. The vet gave him a worming dose and vaccinations, and that is how Pip became the sweet Briar's cat. Mum and Dad said that Pip should sleep in the laundry room and made a bed for him there. But Pip followed Ellie Cuban, who went into the house and was soon spending as much time inside as in the stables. He was a talker and would babble me out to anyone willing to listen, particularly Kate. Mickey also got used to Pip. You wouldn't say they were exactly friends yet, but they were often near each other without creating too much fuss. Although he was friendly to everyone, Kate liked to think Pip was really her cat. He would often wait at Odette's stable when Kate was riding, and when Pip heard them coming back, he would jump on the stable door, meowing loudly, trying to get Kate's attention and a pat. And that is all from Halen and I today. I really hope you've enjoyed this chapter, and I'll see you tomorrow for chapter six. If you have any questions, comments, or reviews, feel free to put it in the comments below, or message me on my social medias, at Lana Clark Equestrian on Instagram, Facebook, or Ace underscore Equestrian on Twitter and until tomorrow guys from Halen and I it's goodbye